come back. So, we have uh, seen that S and F of x minus F x modulus is this. Now, suppose f is a continuous function. Then by definition for a given epsilon positive there exists a delta such that mod of f of u minus f of v this is less than epsilon whenever mod of u minus v is less than delta. Now, it is minus pi to pi is a closed and bounded interval. Therefore, f being continuous is uniformly continuous. Therefore, this delta will depend only on epsilon not on x. Now, with this delta, if we are dividing this integral as mod y less than delta, then we have got f of x minus of y minus of f of x mod d n of y dy plus mod y greater or equal to delta mod of f of x minus of y minus of f of x mod d n of y dy. Now, this let me call this as i plus i 2. Now, what I would expect? I would expect this i 1 to be a small quantity because y is pretty close to 0. Therefore, x minus of y is close to x. Now, if that happens, so this is a uniform continuity. So, i is less than some epsilon, this epsilon into integral mod y less than delta d n of y modulus of d y. Now, this will remain small provided if I have a uniform bound of this quantity which is independent of n, then as n goes large, this is already less than epsilon and then I will come to the second part. Now, before coming to the second part, let us see that can we control, we know that the integral from minus pi to pi d n of y dy is 1, that is good. But now, the question what we are asking, if we take the modulus, can we control the integral of mod d n. So, let us see that what is the integral of mod d n is going to be minus pi to pi, let us say mod d n of y d y. So, this is equal to minus pi to pi mod of sin n plus 1 half y into y by mod sin y by 2 dy. So, now this mod x is always greater or equal to mod sin x. So, therefore, this is greater or equal to 2 minus pi to pi mod sin n plus 1 half of y by mod y dy. Now, this is a modulus is there. So, now we can actually can do something better. So, now, so this is greater or equal to
Now, if I make a change of variable, let us take n plus 1 half of y, this is equal to u. Then, when y is equal to 0, then this is going to be 2, 0 and then n plus 1 half of pi, then this is sin u. Now, d y by y is equal to d u by u. So, this is equal to u of d u. Now, this I can break, let us say k is equal to 0 to this is this I can take greater or equal to n, this is integral of uh, 2 pi, this is just pi k pi k plus 1, uh, this we can make it n minus of 1. So, this is sin u by u d u. So, now this is greater or equal to, now this u is between pi k to pi k plus 1, therefore, 1 by u would going to be greater or equal to 1 by pi k plus 1. So, this is certainly greater or equal to k is equal to 1 to n minus of 1, 1 by k plus 1, some constant this I will get uh, by pi and then integral pi k, this is a modulus over here, pi k plus 1 mod of sin u d u. So, now this if we integrate this factor, then this is going to be independent of k. So, therefore, this I can, this is greater or equal to something like k equal to 1 to n minus of 1, 1 by k plus 1, which is definitely uh, again greater or equal to some constant. integral you can take it to be 1 by uh, this is uh, k plus 1 to k plus 2 and 1 by u d u again. So, this essentially is going to be log of n. Now, what we have seen is that if we are taking the integral with the modulus sign of the Dirichlet kernel, then what we are getting it is greater or equal to some constant times log n. Now, log n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So, now we do not have control over the integral of mod d n which blows up. That suggest the method what we have adopted that epsilon into integral over the mod of d n that we cannot handle. So, now we need to think something else that is why this problem is so hard. Now, before coming back to this convergence issue, we have seen that some kind of uh, S n is uh, S n f at x, which can we have seen in this format minus pi to pi f of x minus of y d n of y d y. This actually one can get it by the change of variable what 
we have got is minus pi to pi f of y d n of x minus y d y. Now, from, from this if we make a change of variable that y going to x minus of y, then you will get d n of y here and then this is a translate of minus pi to pi interval with x, so which is again a 2 pi interval. So, in the integration it is not going to make any difference. So, taking the clue from this, so let us define something called a convolution. Let f and g be 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function, Riemann integrable function. So, we will write um, 0 to 2 pi or depending on which interval we are choosing for our integration, then define f convolution of g at x, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi f of x minus of y g of y dy. As we have explained earlier by just making a change of variable that y going to x minus of y then what we will get here is this is nothing but 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi f of y g of x minus of y dy. In other words, what we are getting is that f convolution of g of x, this is equal to g convolution of f of x. So, this is commutative. Now, the properties of the convolution, some of the properties are trivial as you can see that properties suppose f, g and h they belongs to Riemann integrable function minus pi to pi, three of them are 2 pi periodic functions then f convolution of g plus h, this is equal to f convolution of g plus f convolution of h. This you can see that it is uh, just the linearity of the integral is going to give you this, because integral over g plus h is equal to integral over g plus integral over h. So, that is uh, the precise. So, now the second thing very easy to see if alpha belongs to r, then alpha f convolution of g, this is equal to alpha times f convolution of g, which is equal to f convolution of alpha g, because alpha is a scalar. Therefore, we can put it inside the integral and bring it back whenever we want. So, this is trivial to so. Now, let us calculate f convolution of g. As you can see that if f and g both are Riemann integrable function, then first we need to show that f convolution of g is also a Riemann integrable function this is if I am translating a Riemann 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function that is a Riemann integrable function. Uh, and therefore, we can define this integral f into g if both f and g are Riemann integrable then f g is also Riemann integrable. Uh, so, this definition makes sense and then if we try to write this minus of pi to pi f 
convolution of g of x dx this is equal to minus pi to pi 1 by 2 pi then this is minus pi to pi f of x minus of y g of y dy dx. Now, as you can see that Riemann integration is an absolute integral. Therefore, the absolute value of mod of f of x minus of y g y dy that is finite. So, the, therefore, we can interchange our integral. So, what we are going to get is that this is 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi. First, I will perform the x integral g of y integral minus pi to pi f of x minus of y dx and then dy. Now, again here if I make a change of variable then x going to x minus of y is equal to u for each fixed y I make a change of variable in the dx integral. So, therefore, this will go from y minus pi to y plus pi which is again a 2 pi length of 2 pi and f of u du. So, therefore, I can put it as minus pi to pi f of u du. So, this becomes minus pi to pi g of y integral minus pi to pi f of u du and dy. Now, this is independent of y, this is the integral of f integral of a g. So, now this is Riemann integrable. So, what we have seen that this is a Riemann integrable function and which is again a 2 pi periodic function because f is a 2 pi periodic function then easy to see just taking the value of this is f convolution g of x. So, now it is natural to ask what is going to be the Fourier transform of this convolution. So, before uh, computing the Fourier transform let us see some example what this suppose I take a f and I take g of x to be let us say 1 by some 2 t, t is a positive number and indicator function which is let us uh, take t or rather I take a, a which is less than pi. So, this is minus of a to a of x. Now, f convolution of g of x, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi. Now, let me make a change 2 pi of pi and then this is f of x minus of y g of y dy minus pi to pi. Now, g is supported on minus a to a. So, this is 2 pi into 2 pi by 2 a and then this is minus of a to a. Then this is f of x minus of y dy. Now, if you take x minus of y as u then this one is going to be 1 by 2 pi, uh, 1 by 2 a, this is x minus of a to x plus of a f of y dy. In some sense, you can see that the f convolution g, you can think of is an average of f over an interval minus a to a with the appropriate choice of g. Now, coming back to the Fourier transform because f convolution g is a 2 pi periodic function and we have seen that this is Riemann integrable. So, we will ask f convolution g hat at n by we will just write the definition.
minus of i n x d x. Now, this is 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi and then this is again a factor of 1 by 2 pi is going to come from the convolution pi to pi and then this is f of x minus of y g of y d y into e to the power minus of i n x d x. Now, if I interchange the integral x and y integral by interchanging that what I am going to get is that this is minus pi to pi uh, g of y and then this is minus pi to pi f of x minus of y e to the power minus of i n x d x d y. Now, again you make a change of variable you take for each fixed y you take x minus of y is equal to u. Therefore, this x is equal to y plus u the, this is equal to f of u. So, here 2 pi square minus pi to pi g of y then this is if your x is minus pi then this is u is going to be minus pi minus u if x is equal to pi then this is pi minus of y and then by making a change of variable we have seen multiple times. So, this is going to be minus pi to pi f of x e to the power minus of i or rather if it is I can say f of u e to the power minus of i n u d u and then x is equal to u plus y. Therefore, if I am putting in the e to the power i n x, so it is going to be e to the power minus of i n u plus y u is here. So, now this factor i n of y d y. Now, you take out 1 by 2 pi factor with this integral. So, what you have got 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi g of y e to the power minus of i n y d y this into f hat of n and this is nothing but g hat of n. So, now this is f hat of n g hat of n. So, now the convolution Fourier transform is the product. As a matter of fact, this is another way of looking at it in the class of all Riemann integrable function convolution also as a product. So, now very interesting fact about the convolution is that it increases, uh, it makes the function little better. In what sense? Now, I can take any arbitrary two Riemann integrable function. Now, by convolving, I will get some regularity. That means, I will get at least the continuity. Let us see uh, how we are going to do that. So, now I will write a proposition. let f and g be 2 pi periodic and Riemann integrable function, then f convolution of g is continuous. So, proof first assume f is continuous. So, what I am saying first I will prove that if f is continuous the convolution is going to retain the property of the continuity means f convolution g will also be a continuous function. In order to check the continuity, I need to look at f convolution g of x 
minus f convolution g of y is less or equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi 2 pi f of x minus of u g of u du and then with the linearity uh, I can combine these two and can write this as minus f of y minus of u g of u du. Now, if I take the modulus then I take the modulus over here. Now, this is lesser equal to 1 by again I can put the modulus inside by the triangle inequality. So, what we can get is mod of mod of g u. Okay. So, now we know that f is continuous, f is continuous means what? For small u f of x minus u, if uh, if x minus of u min and y minus of u they are uh, close to each other then f x minus u f y minus u will be small. So, because we are assuming continuity for epsilon positive there exists a delta remember if f is continuous it is uniformly continuous delta such that mod of f of s minus f of t this is less than epsilon whenever mod of s minus of t is less than delta. Okay. So, now here if mod of x minus of y is less than delta for this delta then mod of f of x minus of u minus f of y minus of u this is less than epsilon. So, therefore, this is lesser equal to mod of f convolution of g of x minus of f convolution g of y this is lesser equal to epsilon 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi 2 pi mod of g of u du which is lesser equal to epsilon into supremum of u mod of g u. Now, let me call give a symbol supremum g norm is supremum over mod of g x x belongs to minus pi to pi. So, here epsilon is our uh, is under our control I can take my epsilon by this. So, therefore, when you get this So, this is nothing but epsilon. So, now what we get is that if f is continuous function g is any arbitrary Riemann integrable function then f convolution g is a continuous function. And in the next lecture we will get rid of this continuity condition which is imposed on f and we will prove it for arbitrary um, Riemann integrable f. Thank you.